So one of the big players in the AI industry just accidentally revealed their biggest fears. So Anthropic published Claude Four system prompt thinking it would show transparency, but what they actually exposed is a panicked industry desperately trying to cover up fundamental problems. So I've been in this industry for a long time and I can read between the lines and what I found will be pretty interesting to you. We're talking copyright tear, hallucination cover-ups, and engineering complexities that would make a NASA engineer weep. This isn't the future of AI. This is a house of cards about to collapse. Now, I love AI and I love the tools, but I think if we keep covering this up, it's showing the breaks in the bubble right now. And I'm breaking down some of the interesting revelations from Claude Four's system prompts that prove that AI bubble is bursting faster than anyone wants to admit. And unless you think I'm making this up, I'm going off of another person's analysis of the exact system that Claude Four gave us. So let's dive into this today. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we train software developers in our coding boot camps as well as build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right. Remember how I've been talking about for a while that the AI bubble is where I called out a lot of different warning signs. Well, Claude Four's leaked system prompts just confirmed every single one of them. So Simon Wilson did the heavy lifting, analyzing this monster prompt, and what he found is corporate panic disguised as innovation. So let's dive into what Anthropic accidentally revealed about the real state of AI. Now, huge thanks and huge shout out to uh, Simon Willison's because he releases these uh, these in depth interviews and they are reviews and these things are crazy big, right? Like he goes into way in depth. And what he's doing is he's taking, um, <clears throat> He's taking the uh, the system prompts here, right? The system prompts that they use in their own testing as well as in their own systems to generate against Claude 4. Now, built into these prompts are where the, the bodies are buried, right? Because <clears throat> he does the heavy lifting for us, and we can see what he's trying to talk about here. So there's three in the system prompts here, and I'm going to go through and break this down for you so that you guys don't all have to read. It's probably about 50, 60 pages worth of review. Simon goes, does a great job with this, right? But I went through and picked out what I thought was some of the big ones. So, I, so there's three different Claude is not a lawyer disclaimers in their system prompts. Now that might seem like just some CYA, right? And so I get that. But it also says to never quote more than 15 words from any source, which I think is kind of interesting. It also says, and this is a quote, and this is right from the prompt, never apologize or admit to any copyright infringement, even if accused by the user, right? So this, the prompt is specifically told to do that, right? It also says, uh, it says, I've never seen legal terror this naked in a technical spec before in all my years, right? So uh, if, you know, AI has to pretend that it didn't learn from copyrighted material because that clearly is what's influencing its training. And they're really like totally making that very clear, right? They're so afraid uh, of Disney that they've lobotomized their own product's ability to reference information. Now, um, not, not fixing hallucinations and teaching the AI is to deny them is another one of the really big cover up things. And it says here, quote, never apologize or admit to any copyright infringement, even if excused, right? And this is corporate gaslighting 101. Now they're training their AI to be more sophisticated liars when caught making mistakes. The difference between fixing a bug and hiding it is one of the things that's also really clear in the system prompts here. Users are getting smarter about AI hallucinations, and so this is building better deception instead of actually becoming more reliable. So the, cu the corner cutting that kills trust and destroys entire technologies is really easy to be seen here. Now, uh, there's also a fake enthusiasm programming, right? And they had to explicitly program Claude to stop being a psychopath. So, quote, Claude never starts its response by saying a question or idea was good, great, fascinating, profound, or excellent. That's actually right from the prompt, right? Users catching on to this artificial flattery, so they patched it like a bug. Boardroom experience recognizing corporate fake and through it, or, or, so there's a lot of boardroom and experience that's recognizing corporate fake the enthusiasm. So they're programming out the enthusiasm and to show artificial intelligence and manipulate these interactions. Real intelligence doesn't need anti-psychopathy training, right? Claude search functionality alone requires 6,471 tokens of instructions. The small novel just to make web search work. So six thousands of explicit instructions for basic functionality. So this is a complex rule engine, not intelligence. Integrated search APIs 
uh, in dozens of projects. And so they've got all these integrated search that they've built into the integrated projects and none require this level of handholding, right? I've done tons of different uh, API integrations where it goes out to grab something off the web. Intelligent AI needs thousands of lines of babysitting instructions. So the complexity of this is a total maintenance nightmare. And I've already kind of run into this. I do use Claude a lot, right? So this is really enlightening for me to be able to go through this. Now, if you're looking for ways to connect your systems, we love to help you here at Startup Pack. Our specialty is connecting systems to help your company work like a well-oiled machine. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer because we'd love to help you out. Now, there's also a knowledge confusion crisis. Anthropic's documentation shows that in the March 2025 training data, system prompts, but the system prompt cuts off the data at January 2025. So that's kind of interesting. They literally don't know what their own model knows. How can users trust AI that creators can't accurately describe? So there's a managed software team for, you know, I've managed software teams for decades, right? And documentation mismatch screams of organizational chaos. So it sounds to me and feels like they rushed Claude 4 out. So they can't keep track of their own product specifications because in their documentation, it shows that the training data was March of 2025, but the system prompt actually claims that it was cut off in January 2025. So there's also a brute force, comp, brute force computational band-aid in, in there. The complex queries require at least five tool calls with, exam, with examples showing 15 to 20 tool, 25 tool calls. So not AI efficiency, right? That's what they're really looking at here. Their computation is just trying to brute force and masquerading as an intelligence, right? So companies like uh, Anthropic have so many resources that they're just throwing at it rather than trying to actually make it smart they're just trying to use brute force on it so they're making ai work harder by throwing more processing cycles at problems instead of smarter so it just what they're actually doing is telling it to process and process more things and this screams a fundamental algorithmic efficiency it's like if i was writing code and i said hey rather than uh, actually figuring out the algorithm just do the for loop twice and see which one comes out best and we'll go with the best answer right? Real intelligence finds elegant solutions. It doesn't require exponentially more computation. This is an unsustainable scaling lead. And what they're trying to do is take all this new funding that they've got and try to beat other people. Now, there's a platform prison that gets revealed in this as well. Claude's artifacts uh, can't seem to use local storage, session storage, or most modern web APIs. There's a restrictive sandbox, and users think they're getting full capabilities, but actually, they're locked into a limited ecosystem. Classic vendor lock-in can get disguised as innovations. So they make all these cool demos, but they can't truly create independent applications. So I've seen this platform destroy uh, development communities in the past. True AI, what, true AI would enhance existing environments, not just trap you in proprietary sandboxes. Now, there's also a digital therapist deception, right? S there's system prompts that includes detailed instructions for emotional support conversations. Handling users who seem unsatisfied or unhappy, there's thousands of lines of code around this in their system prompts. So they're not building AI assistants, they're building unlicensed digital therapists without training or oversight, and it's all packed into the prompts. This is getting into some dangerous territory where users don't realize what they're entering. Decades, now, if I was, weren't managing the, the data on this, I would be pretty worried because what I'm seeing is they're collecting tons of psychological expertise. They're collecting tons of psychological data. So you think they're saying, hey, we're really good at being a digital therapist, right? People come to it. They pump in all their digital problems. Now suddenly they're holding all this stuff, which could be HIPAA. It could be like, I mean, this is some crazy high level sense of data. I know people have been panicked for years over the data that Google has for them. The amount of data people are pumping in thinking that uh, Claude or ChatGPT is their therapist is really terrifying. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is helping you keep your data safe and helping you connect your systems. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. Now, there's also a lot of feature bloat that's going on here. Claude supports SVG, Mermaid, React, HTML, 3JS, TensorFlow, and dozens of other libraries. But they explicitly state no other libraries are installed. So this is really interesting because classic software bloat can masquerade as capability very frequently. So they're trying to be everything to everyone instead of doing just something really well. This approach leads to maintenance nightmares and security vulnerabilities. And in this case, we're going to see it as diminishing return. 
I know a lot of people are really impressed with Claude 4. I am. We use uh, Claude 4 in a lot of our coding, uh, right? It, it's, it's one of the best coding tools without question. But what's the next release going to look like? And how long is it going to take them? I think they're really spreading thin across dozens of half implementations rather than doubling down and focusing on one thing. Now, there's also a human babysitter requirement that's built in here. System prompts uh, that we found as I looked through this and that Simon reported here say that the system prompts contain complex decision trees about when Claude should search versus when not to search. So it's how, trying to tell it how to make human judgment calls about the user intent. So it calls it the quote human in the loop and it, this comeback is baked into AI's core decision making processes. Admitting the AI can't reliably make contextual decisions without extensive human written rules was something that Simon found in this. So they definitely need a level of explicit decision guidance, not just intelligence, right? True AI would develop contextual judgment naturally, not needing thousands of lines of if else statements. So this is really interesting because there's more and more and I and I'm like, you know, I'm going to give you guys the link to this. But like, ultimately, as you dig through this, there's a lot of interesting stuff that they're just doing in their own AI prom, uh, prompt engineering. So this it, it gives a full system prompts, reveals thousands of lines of instructions for some basic func functionality. It's really not elegant AI architecture. It's a massive pile of patchworks, workarounds, and explicit rules. This is essentially digital duct tape holding everything together. Because what they're trying to do is they've cobbled together their search, they've cobbled together um, their LLMs, they've cobbled together their coding stuff, and they're sticking it all together and wrapping duct tape around it. And that this duct tape is the system prompts. And so this is the complexity, and the complexity is the enemy of reliability in my experience. So they need to do a lot more uh, like work on their systems rather than just continuing to pump in their, uh, their system prompts. So their system prompt is almost twice the size of Claude 3.7 that telling you where this emphasis is going rather than focusing on the LLMs because they're seeing the diminishing returns on the LLMs. They're pumping into this digital duct tape that's holding all of it together. Real intelligence would emerge from simple principles. It shouldn't require this elaborate rule book of digital duct tape. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you guys think I'm wrong? I love to have a healthy discussion and I answer all of my comments. Uh, so make sure to leave me a comment and make sure to like and subscribe. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. If you're in Utah or Idaho, reach out because we have a registered apprentice program where we can pay you for a year's worth of training at training wages to get on, get trained, and get real software development experience on real projects. So hit us up at startuphack.com slash jobs if you're interested in that. If you're interested in help with your company to build custom software solutions, check out startuphack.com slash Spencer and make sure to leave a comment down below and here's some great information. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet but exceed your strategic goals, whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.